very much for attending headquarters. Detective Sergeant Pauline Gray of the Homicide Squad will update you in regards to homicide number four for 2013. Detective Sergeant. Afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Detective Sergeant Gray from the Toronto Police Homicide Squad, and I'm the lead investigator for Homicide 4 for 2013. On Saturday, January 19, 2013, the Toronto Police Service and the Toronto Fire Service received a call to attend a residence on Melville Avenue in Toronto. This was in regards to the smell of natural gas. As the fire department searched the surrounding residences for the smell of that gas, sorry, the source of that gas, they came upon the body of a deceased male. This male has been identified as Jose Ignacio Ortez, O-R-T-I-Z, uh, born in 1947. Uh, after a post-mortem on yesterday's date, the cause of death was found to be blunt force trauma. Originally from Ecuador, Mr. Ortez was a 65-year-old unemployed resident of the city of Toronto. Although Mr. Ortez spent the majority of his time in his small apartment he str and struggled with addiction, he was well known within his community. I'm asking the public's help at this time in mapping out Mr. Ortez's last days. Anyone having contact or knowing his movements uh, on the dates of Friday, January 18th and Saturday, January 19th are asked to call the Toronto Police Homicide Squad, 14 Division or Crime Stoppers. Dylan? Were there any way associated with the smell of natural gas, do you know? Um, the, this, actually, the, the gas itself um, was uh, the reason we were in the apartment. I'm not uh, convinced that it had anything to do with the, with the murder of Mr. Ortez. Uh, it's been cold, as you know, over the last couple of days, and uh, residences often use their, their gas appliances to uh, add warmth to their, to their spaces, and so I'm not convinced that it has anything to do with it. He was, sir, yes. He was found in his apartment. And was there a smell of natural gas in his apartment? Uh, not by the time I got there, no. It is a basement apartment. It is uh, quite small. and It's at the rear of a residence. Um, and Mr. Artez had actually lived there for uh, um, a number of years. Okay. Yes. Mr. Yes, Mr. Ortez, I um, was an I was an addict and uh, struggled with um, addictions and and as such spent uh, the majority of his time in his residence. So wasn't out in the out and about in the community, but was known within a small community that he lived. So was he, as they say, known to the police? Uh, sir, he had uh, some contact with the police, but over 20 years ago. So a fairly reclusive a fairly reclusive man. Um, I'd be more specific if I could. Um, I'm not, he, addictions uh, were, were spoken to by people who knew him. I mean, he hasn't been diagnosed with anything but addictions to alcohol, uh, cocaine, crack cocaine, cigarettes. You said that uh, the cause of death was blunt force trauma. I mean, can you be specific? I mean, was he hit on the head or? I'm not going to be more specific at that, for this at this point. Any ideas for why? Any, or, or how many people involved? Um, I have no idea why, and I don't know how many people were involved at this point. Any signs of a struggle in this apartment? Again, not going to speak to the specifics of the assault itself. Um, there are, uh, uh, that is for the uh, accused to, uh, to maybe identify to me, and uh, I don't want to put that out there, so too much information. Okay, Good. that's all the questions right now. Thank you very much. Sorry? At G-R-A-Y. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ortez, yes, had family in the city, um, uh, they, and they've been notified as of about an hour ago. And, and initial analysis for an hour, but have they, have they been able to gain an idea as to why someone was done? Uh, no, sir. In fact, I'm heading over there now as we speak. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you, guys.